Hello everyone, this is Ben with ERP Connect Consulting. And in this video, we're gonna walk you through the steps needed to generate a payment file for your vendors out of Business Central that you can upload to your bank. So before getting started from the transactional aspect, there are three places that we'll need to make sure are set up before we can go ahead and transact with that vendor payment export. So the first place we'll need to go is the company information. There's just one piece of data that we'll need here, which is this federal ID number that's going to be located on the export file. So you will need the federal ID number of your company in order to generate that file. So this is setup window one. Just make sure you got that federal ID number here. The next step is going to be the bank account. So these are your bank accounts that you're going to be using to pay vendors, right? So you can have multiple and each will require its own setup. So we're going to focus on just one today, but note that these steps would be the same for every bank account you want to enable to pay vendors out of your system. So let's go to checking and there's a few different fields that we'll need uh, to fill out here in order to ensure we can pay these vendors and generate a payment export file. So of course, you'll need all of your banking information here, but the most important pieces to the export are going to be this bank account number, which is just your account number on file, and then the routing number, which is going to be down here called transit number. So outside of those pieces, we also need some setups within Business Central on your bank account you're going to be paying out of. One of those being the last remittance advice number. So this is just going to number sequentially. You can see it's at three right now. So you can just start with one or 1,000 or uh, 100,000, whatever you want. It's just going to increment one every time. And that's going to be the number on your remittance advice. Uh, you'll also need a bank account posting group. Uh, this doesn't have anything to do with the actual export, but just a good general rule of thumb, uh, one for one relationship with a general ledger account in your system. You'll need a country export format. In this case, I just have US. You'll need an ePay export file name. Again, this is going to be similar to the remittance, but once you export the remittance and now you actually go to export the file you're going to upload to your bank, this is going to be the name of that file. And then you need a payment export format. So this, we just have, uh, we're using the out of box one today called US EFT default. Now this should get you most of the way there from uh, a base setup standpoint. However, each bank is a little bit different. So what I would recommend if you're doing this for the first time is request from your bank contact a NACHA file. What this NACHA file will do is it will outline every piece of the configuration that you need in Business Central to make sure that your format you've created matches with what the bank is expecting. These two formats need to match up in order to make sure the bank will accept your file. So those are a few things here that we need in order to configure your bank account that the money is going to be coming out of uh, in order to make sure that the process will work when we get into the next step. So we've configured your bank. Now let's go configure your vendor's bank. So I'm going to jump into one of my test vendors here. And what we'll need to do is we'll need to come up to navigate and click bank accounts. So each vendor can have multiple bank accounts. Uh, in this case, we just have one and I've also defaulted it on my vendor card. But when I click in here, there's uh, four or five fields that we need to make sure that we populate. Of course, you'll need a code and a name to identify uh, the vendor's bank, but you'll need a country region code. In this case, I just have US. You'll need a bank account number, similar to how we saw on our internal bank account. You'll need a routing or transit number here. And then one of the most important things, which this, this tab may be hidden right now, expand the transfer if you don't see it, is the use for electronic payments. So this will now enable that to be included in a payment export batch. If this is not checked, uh, it will not allow you to export it when we do our next step within the actual payment journal. So again, just make sure you got a country, make sure you got an account and routing number and make sure that use for electronic payment is checked. So now that we have this, I've also should be somewhere here in the middle of the screen under payments, made sure that that's my preferred bank account. So when we actually go in and transact, you'll see that this bank account automatically comes up when I select this vendor. So we've now set up the federal ID on the company. We've set up your banking information so that when you export it, the bank will know where it should pull the money from. And we've set up the vendor bank account so we know where to send the money to the specific vendor with their account and routing number uh, when this payment is processed in our next step here. So those are the three things. Let's jump into the actual transaction next. So I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna go to payment journal. And we're just going to create a manual payment for right now. Um, the other option would be to 
uh, use the suggest vendor payments or suggest employee payments. What these are going to do is uh, it's going to look at things like the credentials or the uh, the options that you've selected, uh, as well as the due dates and things like that to suggest vendors that need to be paid based on that criteria. Um, however, I'm just going to go and set up this batch first. So what we'll want to do is create a batch for EFT. You'll notice that my balancing account type is bank. My balancing account number is checking. I would highly recommend this. Uh, a lot of people even do one batch per bank. That way that balancing account is always there. Uh, the last thing you'll need to make sure is this allow payment export. Make sure that's checked. This will allow us to actually generate the files we need when this batch is being selected. So again, if you've got multiple banks that you're going to be doing EFTs out of, uh, I would highly suggest making multiple batches for each bank account. Uh, that way it becomes a one for one relationship and it makes it super easy to process these transactions. So now that I've set this up, <clears throat> I'm going to select the EFT here and you'll notice uh, we've got one line down here that we want to start populating. So it's got today's date already populated. It's already got payment and I want to go down here and select that vendor that we just were working with on the setup. So you'll notice that my recipient's bank account has been automatically populated. This is the bank that we're going to be sending the money to for this vendor. If we scroll a little bit further to the right, uh, I'm just going to put in $525, let's say for this one. <clears throat> This is the bank account that it's going to be coming out of. Uh, if you had open invoices that you wanted to apply it to, uh, you would just mark the invoices here. Uh, again, I've got uh, some unapplied payments, but I don't have any actual open invoices. So we're going to skip that for now. Uh, however, if you did that, it would automatically apply these to the invoices uh, in question. And those invoices would also show up on the remittance. The last thing I need to make sure of is that the bank payment type here is electronic payment. And you'll notice that the check printed box is unchecked. Uh, this is also going to apply to payment exports. So when we do the next step here in a second, we will see that get updated. So now I've got everything I need. I've got a date, I've got a payment. I've got a vendor that we're paying. I've got their bank account and I've got the amount, the bank account we're sending it from and electronic payment um, selected here. So first thing we'll need to do is actually go ahead and export, go to bank export. This is going to export the remittance. So if I click export here, it's just going to give us one more screen with some filters on it. I'm just going to click OK. And it has downloaded my remittance here. Now you could email this, um, you could download it and send it uh, manually. But here you're seeing that I've got an unapplied amount for $525 on my remittance advice. Again, uh, if you had those actually applied to invoices, those invoices would show here in the first line as to what it was applied to. So the remittance has been exported. That's good. We can now actually export the uh, EFT file that we're going to upload to the bank. So here you're going to come to actions, functions, and generate EFT file. <clears throat> we're going to get one more screen here. This is kind of your last chance to uncheck or check things that need to be included. In this case, we just have one. So we'll check that and we'll just go generate EFT files. It's now exporting it. We can see it down here in our downloads folder. This is what you would now upload uh, to the bank when you're when you're ready to upload that. So let me show you what it looks like real quick. Uh, again, this would be based on your configuration from that Nacha file that we took a look at. This is just the out of the box uh, US file that's going to export. So likely there will need to be minor changes to this based on uh, your bank specifications. If you need help configuring this, I would recommend uh, reaching out to your current Business Central partner uh, or feel free to reach out to anyone on our team. We're always happy to help and give assistance on these configuration pieces. As we know, it can help you save a lot of time on your day to day processing when paying vendors. So this is the file. Again, you just take this, save it, whatever you need to do, and then make sure you upload that to your banking portal. And then that would initiate those payments to come out of your bank and go into the banks here that you've defined uh, for all of your vendors. This file can be very large if you have hundreds of vendors uh, with hundreds of invoices that you're paying, right? So after that's been generated, you'll notice it gets cleared out of this line. If we come here, you'll notice that check printed, uh, it changes that checkbox to checked, just indicating that we've uh, finished the process. Then the last piece, of course, now that we have generated the remittance, and we've also uh, generated the EFT file that we can upload, we still need to post this. So you'll come up here to post print. You'll go ahead and post, click yes. Journal lines were posted successfully and it disappears out of our batch. So that is it for the end to end process of creating and setting up your bank accounts and your vendors bank accounts, setting up the NACHA or the EFT export formats. 
and actually going through the payment journal process to make sure those vendors get paid with this file. So if there's any other questions on the process, please feel free to reach out to us or drop us a comment. We always love hearing your questions and we look forward to speaking to you all soon. Thanks.